When we were in the secondary school and a boarder, that is, residents in the school premises, some of us were so lawless, we broke the school rules and regulations at will, and of course, anyone caught was severely punished. Today, everyone will have to abide within some boundaries and limitations, literally means. There are certain red lines lines you must not cross. Crossing it could trigger unimaginable consequences. Daniel 5 to 1 to 9 KJV Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand, and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Father, once again we commit this meeting into your hands. Take it over from me, take it over from your people. Have your way in the lives of your people, and let there be transformation in their lives. Let there be restoration, let there be victories, let there be success, let there be divine healing, let there be promotion. And above all, let there be salvation in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Bless them in your name, God. In Jesus' mighty name. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. God was in control anyway, so I, I was, uh, I couldn't come, but I couldn't come live. <laughs> you know, that's how life is. Somebody said, hey. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake, and said to the wise men of Babylon, 
Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof. One day I might not be here again. <laughs> the owner of life might have called me home and say, Hey, my friend, you have done enough. Come home. And that will be the end of my post. But others will continue because the work of God cannot stop. Nobody can alter or truncate the word of the work of God on this planet shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom then came in all the king's wise men but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof to the one that sent us here to fulfill this assignment Thank you for coming. I bless your God for your life. And if by adventure I've not been, like I said, I've not been able to come in life these days, I please accept my sincere apologies. Thank you so much. But God has enabled me to be here this afternoon. I'm grateful to God. And I hopefully... Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him. And his lords were astonished. The king in the above scriptures got carried away under the influence of the spirit of Bacchus alcoholic. Hallelujah. The topic we are speaking on this afternoon is your overflow. Your overflow has started. I'm sure there is nobody in this world that does not want an overflow. Overflow of divine health. Absolutely no sickness. Commanded vessels of gold and overflow silver cups finances, taken away from the temple of God in Jerusalem joy, to be brought for drinking in honor of peace, Satan and his idols by that action. Queen he had crossed God's red line. Rest. Hallelujah. There's nobody that does not want an overflow. Who does not want an overflow of good news? You just had one good news now. Another few hours after, another good news came. Another day, another good news came. Another good news, from good news to good news. With God filtering out. That very night he was slain Andarius because king in his stead. Daniel 5.20 to minus 31 KJV and thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And he only gives it to his own, his own children. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture that says in the book of Psalm 30, verse 5, he said, Weeping may endure for a night. Weeping may endure for a weeping. You know, I shared it in the last uh, live show I had. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and, and thy concubines, have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. Them are unavoidable. The ones that are avoidable are the ones that you bring into your own life by yourself. True sin. But the other challenges of life that will come your way, they are orchestrated from above. Hallelujah. Uh, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified? Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written, mean, mean, tekel, hafarsen. the examinations of life. And you must pass them. That's the, that's the point. They are, that's why I said they are unavoidable. You must go through the process and overcome them and move to the next level. Hallelujah. That's how life is. You also have been to school. You know what I'm talking about. You have been to school. And you know at every end of the year or every end of each term, you go through examination processes. They take you through exams of what they have taught you. So, this and is the interpretation of the thing, mean, God hath numbered thy kingdom, and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances, and art found wanting, Perez, thy kingdom is divided, and given to the Medes and Persians. through the process of examination, from one level 
to another. Hallelujah. Those who stagnate in life, it means that they are either not passing the exam or they want to sidetrack the, 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 the exams of life. They want to sidetrack it. They want to go through the shortcut. Then There's commanded no Belshazzar, the and they clothed Daniel with it. scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and Each made a proclamation nice concerning yeah, him, you know, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. Tie into the over, over, where they are now on top of the clouds. They go some, sometimes they go 40,000 uh, feet above, above sea level, 50,000 feet above sea level, 60,000 feet above sea level. But they must pass through the clouds. And Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old, going down to lifeless structures, and even worshipping and you praising them. cannot avoid them. Whether in marriage, whether in relationships, whether in the place of work, whether in your business, whether in your neighborhood, whether on the road, in the traffic, you always encounter challenges. And you know the beauty of including Satan himself changes, and his cohorts is, is not only crossing the bar, breaking limits it. and shattering the glass ceiling, but provoking and, and invoking the direct the wrath of God. And today, uncountable amount of lost challenge. souls are living in this That's unholy arena of space. I give up in life. When some people commit suicide in life, when com com from people get discouraged because of one challenge or the other. No, it's not so. Challenges are meant to be overcome. That's how God did it. That's why the Bible says Sincerely that hope you are not one of them. Joy. Otherwise, an no invite has been sense. signaled to attract his anger. Walk away now. Enjoy your day. LD. He said, count it all joy when you come into, when you come into diverse temptations of life. Count it all joy. Be joyful. God, I'm laughing now because somebody some years ago, when I was like I've, I've shared it before, I'm sharing it again. When I was a baby Christian, immediately I gave my life to Christ. Oh Lord God Almighty, have mercy. All kinds of challenges were just coming. From the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, they were just coming. I was almost getting discouraged. I said, why did I come this route? Then I went to, God led me to a, a couple who were already more advanced in the spiritual than myself. Although they were younger than me at that time, but they were more advanced in the spiritual than myself. I went to meet them and I said, hey, I gave my life to Christ and these are the things I'm encountering. These are the things I'm facing. You know what they said to me? They just laughed at me, just like I'm laughing now. They said, hey, just tell God to bring more of those challenges your way. I said, what? What did you say? And she said, she, the woman was the one that said the statement because the husband was a bit of a gentleman, but they were in sync together. They were in agreement. He said, tell God to bring more, 10 times more of those challenges your way. I said, do you want to kill me? He said, no. Those challenges are orchestrated to take you to the next level. Without those challenges, you can't go to the next level. I just said, well, <laughs> reluctantly, I said, let God have your way. And truly, you better believe it those challenges were multiplied. But God in his infinite faithfulness stood by me all the way. All the way. And there was not one single challenge or situation that overwhelmed me. Not one. I overcame them all. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, that's why in the book of Psalm 34, verse 19, they said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Psalm 34, verse 19. Write it down and go and read it after. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He didn't say he would deliver him nine out of ten or ninety-nine out of hundred. No. He said he delivers him out of them all. Just like I gave you the testimony, I said I overcame them all. And some of those who are fighting me, who are bringing challenges to my way, 90% of them are dead. The ones that are not dead have, 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 been, have been capitulated, have been subdued under. They've gone under. <laughs> So I'm saying, why am I saying all of this? I'm not saying it to elevate myself. No, hell no. I'm saying it for your own good. That no matter what you are going through, hanging there, count it all joy. God will show up for you. He showed up for me. He never one day or in one situation, disappointed me once. He will show up for you. You better believe it. And he's still showing up for me, up till now. And he will continue to show up for me, and for you too, all the days of your lives, in the name of Jesus. Because he's a faithful God. So, that's why he said, when you pass through water, that water in Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. Go and read it when we finish. When you pass through water, he said, that water will not overflow you. That is, when you go through the storms of life, the challenges of life, it will never bring you down. What will he do? He will go underneath your feet and push you up. That's a mystery of the kingdom of God. It goes under. You step on it, you overcome it, and you get elevated. That's the way it works. That's the storms of life. And he went further. He said, when you pass through fire, it shall not burn you. Oh, Lord God Almighty, I pray you are getting what I'm saying. I pray your life will be transformed exponentially if you can get this message that's why i'm going to read some scriptures for you here so you will know definitely you are gravitating through towards an overflow in your life hallelujah you are gravitating you are moving steadily slowly towards overflow then all those things will become history Every other challenge that comes in life, you just smile over it and you step on it, you move higher. You remember the case of the horse that was going to be buried? You all know the story, so at least some of you know the story. The owner wanted to bury the horse alive. So he pushed the, the, the horse into the hole, very deep hole. And what did he do? He started pouring sand on top of the horse into the hole, started pouring sand on top of the horse. Into the, as it was pouring the sand on top of the horse, the horse was shaking off the sand, shaking it off his body, shaking it, and moving higher. So the sand he was pouring inside of it to bury the horse, the horse was shaking it off his body and it was falling. And it was filling the ground gradually, filling the ground gradually, filling the ground gradually. Until he filled it to the point where the horse just came out of the field, he pushed the horse up, and the horse just walked away. That's how the challenges of life are. So don't despair. Don't be discouraged. I know a lot of people, I know it, I've been there. That's why we are ministers of God. That's why we are here as his servants. He's brought us back again to come and minister this afternoon. To encourage you, to let you know that those things you are passing through, is a face. However, 
there's there's a clincher here. You must not, number one belong to him. Two, you must obey him. You want to pass the exam? The teacher is teaching you some things about some subjects, about some literatures. Won't you listen to the teacher? Won't you listen to some tips he's going to give you concerning the exams you are going to pass through? Because he's the one who is going to set the exam anyway. So you must submit yourself to the teacher, to the teaching of the teacher. Whatever instruction he gives you as your teacher, you must obey because he's the one setting the exam for you. And he's the one who's going to mark the exam. That's exactly the way God is. He's the one bringing and orchestrating those challenges into your life in order for you to be promoted. And he says in Psalm 34, 32, verse 8, I've, I keep quoting this scripture. It's very apt always. He said, I will instruct you. I will teach you. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you shall go towards that overflow, towards the peace of mind, towards healing, towards divine health, towards abundance, towards peace of mind that passes all others. I will instruct you towards what to do concerning that relationship, that naughty marriage, towards that recalcitrant child. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you shall go. Then he capped it all. He said, then I will guide you with my own eyes. That's how to overcome the challenges. Very simple. Very simple. Obedience. Kai. Obedience. And you will smile. Hallelujah. You will smile. Let me read uh, the book of Zephaniah to you from verse chapter 3 from verse 13 to 20. So it gives you an idea of what I am talking about. Because in the, I quoted it earlier, the Psalm 30 verse 5, it said, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hang in there. Don't lose hope. Don't get discouraged. The economy of your nation is bad. The environment is hostile. Insecurity here, insecurity there. Accident here, accident there. Or that boss is making life very difficult for you. Hey, hang in there with God. Commit it into the hands of God. He will instruct you what to do. He will teach you what to do. He will teach you what to say. He will teach you what step to take. He will teach you who to make a call to. He will teach you and guide you how to navigate around that challenge. Then see what will happen. I want to read it for you. Look at it. Psalm, I mean, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13 to 20. He said, The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. Allow to do iniquity. I'm sure you have family members that are not alive today. You have friends who are your... You have friends who are your... You have to be alive. So you are not alive to be disobedient. You want to smile over that challenge? Just listen to him. Be obedient to him. You want to heal him? You want deliverance? Be obedient to him. Whatever he tells you to do, just do it. He has his... He has his... Whatever it tells you to do, do it. Don't disobey him. Don't do this, don't do it. Do this, do it. Don't go, don't go. 
Some people have gone when they were instructed not to go and they got accidented and they died on the road. The road is not clear now. Don't go now. Give it about a day or two before you go or give it a few hours or just a few minutes. Just hang in there. Step, step down. Slow down. He sees it all. So don't do iniquity. He said, the remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity, nor speak lies, neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Did you hear that? You will lie down in your house, and absolutely nothing shall make you to be afraid when you obey his instructions. Stay where you are for now. Don't go yet. Stay. Don't do that. You don't do it. Give to so so and so. You give. Go and apologize. You apologize. Restore. Restore. Show humility. You show humility. You remove pride from your life. You just simply obey. You remember what Jesus Christ's mother told the, 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 the servants when there was no more wine in the place? What did he tell them? He said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. See, every form of disobedience blocks the overflow in your life. Every form of disobedience. The opportunity to be healed from that sickness, disobedience blocks it. The opportunity to get help from the person who is supposed to help you, whom God has sent to help you. What happens? Disobedience blocks that opportunity. Every form of assistance and favor of God that has enveloped you as with a shield, disobedience blocks it. Somebody said, ah, come to my place tomorrow. Come to my place tomorrow. Just come. He said, why is he calling me? I'm not his mate. Meanwhile, he's the guy that he's been sent to help you. I'm senior, I'm, I'm older than him. Why should I go to his office? He should come to me. Meanwhile, he wants to, he, he didn't tell you he wants to bless you because if he tells you he wants to bless you, he will quickly come. But he want, God wants to use him to test you. He said, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Well, you see, the, 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 there's something at this junction I want you to know. The, 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 there's something at this junction I want you to know. Go to his office. He will tell you, go. You go. If he tells you don't go, don't go. Or even come to my house. Ask God first. You are feeling headache. You are not asking, Lord, I have, I have a, a small headache. What do I do? He said, go and just, just drink a, a glass of water. You ask him first. You are not going to ask him that. You are not using your sense to say, no, let me go and take an analgesic. I have a headache. You just go and take an analgesic, two tablets. You gulp it down with water. That's your own sense. That's your own wisdom. But I'm giving you a higher wisdom now. Every decision you are to take in life, connect God first. Your boss writes you a letter. He said you are sad from your place of work. He said, thank you, sir. You take that letter. You don't call your wife first. You don't call your husband first. You don't call your pastor first. You don't call your friend first. That I've just been sad. Take that letter. Go to the rest, restroom and quickly open it as if you want to ease yourself. Close the door. Addendum kindly press the middle paragraph twice. It will stop for you to read after reading press. Once it will continue to the next page and repeat saying till you finish reading. Thanks. He will instruct you. He will teach you and guide you in the next stage. Even that sack letter might even be a hoax. It might even be a lie. Somebody might have orchestrated it out of a vendetta against you. God might say, no, don't worry about the letter. Go and meet so-so and so in the company, in the organization. Show him the letter. 
and that one could